Hi, this is Andrew from Synergy, and now I'm going to be showing you Air Control, the control system for our multi-channel, multi-server broadcast automation system. Let's take a look. So, to install Air Control, let's go to our Install folder and select it. Hit the Setup, and let it do its thing. Accept the license terms, and let it roll through. We're not going to be doing anything with the audio profile editor today, so I'll just let it go, get on with it, and it'll only be finished in a few seconds, and there we are. So now that AirPro is installed, we're going to need to configure it. And to do that, I have a new icon that I can select, which is AirPro Config. Here we can see the basis for configuration. There are three modes, playlist editor, single channel control, and multi-channel control. We're not going to be talking about multi-channel control today. I'll start up the system initially in the playlist editor so that you can see what that looks like. So select the icon and click it, and air starts. So here, we see the interface ready for loading content. I have some content here, and all I need to do is select it and drag and drop it into the playlist. Properties for each item can be set, whether it's clocked or followed, join in progress, etc. Timings can be set. Everything can be organized in this playlist so that it's ready to go, but it's not the only way of working with air. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that go, and I'm going to reconfigure one more time. Go back to the configurator and select single channel control. This will now allow us to control the air engine that we installed in the last video. You'll notice that two fields here are outlined in red. The reason is, without these two fields being filled in, nothing will work. So this is our way of reminding you what you need to do. We installed the engine on the same machine as the control panel, although we don't need to. The control panel can be run completely separately across the other side of the world, if you so choose. But since we've picked a local engine, all I need to do is tick here. The red box goes away, and the engine is configured. What I also need to do is specify an active playlist. And the way I do that is simply click on the browser and give it a name. And that red field has dis disappeared as well. We will make one more change here, and I'm going to add in the graphics repository because I have a few prepared templates that I'll be showing you later on. Once I've done this, I make sure also that my television standard matches the television standard on the engine. And once I've done that, we're ready to go. Other things that we can do from here, we can set it so that AirPro connects automatically. Swap control monitors means that you can move from our standard of playout on the left and preview on the right and have play out on the right and preview on the left, if you so choose. So having made our configuration, I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to restart Air Pro. This will now come up looking different from what we just saw. Here now, as you see, we can see the Air Engine that we configured earlier, showing blue, waiting for input. This is our preview screen. Now first thing that we will need to do before we do anything else is connect to the engine, because at the moment we're detached from it. And the way we connect is we move here. I call this the danger zone, because any one of these buttons could interrupt a broadcast if hit by accident. So they are only enabled when you hit on-off, and they are only enabled for five seconds, thus preventing potential accidents. Now that we're connected to the engine, I can start loading the playlist. And I do that by finding the media, which I've prepared in my little content fol folder here, and simply dragging and dropping it into the system. The first thing that I'm asked is, would I like to change the time of the first item because it will need to be a clocked item. So if I load it as it is, it will start immediately, or I can set a different time. I'm going to leave it as it is, and it will start playing. I can then add additional content simply by dragging and dropping. As you can see, we have color coding here. The pink indicates on air. The yellow indicates queued. And you will also see there is a queued item start time and a start queued button also in yellow. Green indicates that the, that the content is ready for playout. 
If there is a problem with it, it will appear in red, and you will need to address that. If we go around the interface so that we can see what we are looking at, here we have the countdown of the item on air, how long it has to play, and its counterpart, how long it's been on, with a counter and a visual display. Here we have the real time that the queued item, the next item in the playlist, will start. Here we have the clock with the current time as it is. And here we have the countdown to the end of automation. This covers secondary events, which we'll be talking about in a later video. So that's the first look at air control. In later videos, we'll be looking at branding and more advanced techniques. See you next time.